Hello and welcome to episode four of Don't Forget with Anna Francis. I'm Anna Francis, the CEO of the SFU and a registered counsellor in New Zealand. This video series is all about sharing my thoughts, ideas and reminders about things we so often and easily forget when we're practicing solution-focused brief therapy. In each segment, I'll focus on one key thing that I hope helps you while you're on your learning journey or keeping your solution-focused skills sharp. Back in episode three, I talked about what you need to leave at the therapy door to help you from getting stuck. So if you didn't see it, scoop back and have a look. But in this episode, I'm gonna talk about which parts of ourselves we need to bring into the session to help your sessions flow. When we're learning this approach, we soak up as much training as possible and watch as many therapy sessions as we can get our hands on and then try and copy what we see, which is a pretty normal way to learn how to do most things, right? The problem with solution-focused brief therapy is that we can't do therapy exactly like those that we learn from because we're not the same. We're all different. None of us can do solution-focused brief therapy like Elliot because we're not Elliot and none of us can do solution-focused brief therapy like Adam because we're not Adam. But when we see bits of ourselves and how others use this approach, we do feel like we're doing okay, which is why this reminder is so important. So just like last month's episode, we need to really take a look inwards and find out who we are in the session. The therapy fundamentals are the same, of course, but how we use language and how our personality shows up is also incredibly important. When I first started learning solution-focused brief therapy, I was trying so hard to use the solution-focused approach, just like I was learning from Elliot, Adam, Chris Iverson, and Evan George, but I really struggled. Elliot and Chris are so concise and down to business, for lack of a better description, and Evan and Adam are so considered and thoughtful and slow-paced in their approach. Both extremes, I am neither by personality. I'm super chatty and I'm super wordy. I'm a quick processor, so I'm prone to respond quickly. And I've also been known to interrupt a time or a million. So it was a real challenge for me to figure out how to be comfortably me and still be solution focused like them. And I think this is something many people really struggle with when they're learning this approach. It's hard to be confident in ourselves when it looks different from what we're learning. I realized I was getting stuck because I was too busy trying to think about what the right thing was to do next the right next question, asked in the right way and at the right pace, until I realized the right way for me was my way. I know all the fundamental theories about this approach. I know what questions are and are not solution focused. So I realized I needed to focus for a while on what my being me in this space looked like. I needed to allow the parts of me into the room that created the most comfortable space. I'm a wordy person and that's okay. I'm a lighthearted and bubbly person and that's okay. I'm a humorous person and that's okay. And I'm a deeply caring and nurturing person and that's okay too. Getting okay with who I am when I'm in the therapy room was a game changer. Trusting my own ability to use this approach when it looks like me allowed me to trust the process and trust my clients. So if this isn't something that you've yet considered as you're learning this approach, give it some thought and see what are some wonderful things about you that make your sessions unique and what your style is. And if you being uniquely you was part of the secret to being the best solution-focused clinician you can be, what difference would it make to your confidence and comfort level in your sessions? Please comment below because I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And if you're someone who's already discovered who you are uniquely in your session, I would love to hear what difference it made when you realized that that was who you are. Building your skill level requires building confidence. And building confidence requires self-awareness and clear direction of where to put your learning energy. Taking the risk to step out of your comfort zone is often where the best learning happens and the discovery to step into yourself. So thank you so much for joining me for this solution focus snippet. And I really hope that this reminder helps you as you continue to grow your skills and confidence. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and share with your colleagues and leave a comment below because I really do love to interact with you. And don't forget to subscribe for our YouTube channel and click on the bell so you get notifications for our other amazing videos all about using solution-focused breath therapy with your clients. So until then, keep being you.